I'm Odell Brown. I'm the vice president of the Southeast Oklahoma Beekeeper Association. I've been a beekeeper for about 45 years. Uh, I guess it's one of the best hobbies you can get into, but it's real expensive, beekeeping is. Uh, you know, beekeeping and farming kind of goes hand in hand. If you don't have the bees, you're not going to produce. Bees, 83% of your pollination is honeybees. The rest is local pollinators, bumblebees, sweat bees, things like that. But honeybees is your major contributor to pollination. A good strong hive will average about 60,000 bees and take it for 21 day lifespan. A worker bee this time of year, spring of the year, lives for 21 days. That queen has got to produce 2,500 eggs a day to keep up that 60,000. And you want a strong, aggressive queen. Your queen is your, well, that's the goal. If you ain't got a good queen, you ain't gonna have no bees. And uh, you know, you take 60,000, you think, man, that's a lot of bees. Well, it's not really. Like I said, they, they only live 21 days. Uh, majority of your, your components of, of your hive are female bees. Your females is all your workers. They do everything in the hive. Your queen, she lays eggs, that's all she does. Uh, worker bees groom her, they feed her, they feed the drones. The drone is a male bee. You'll only have probably a thousand drones in a hive. That's male bees. He only they only mate with the queen one time and that's it. Uh, drought comes along, like last year, you don't have no drones because all them girls is gonna kick them outside. They'll kill them because they're gonna eat their honey up and they're gonna starve. So them girls are pretty rough on them male bees. But, uh, well, I kinda lose my train of thought because, you know, 50 minutes ain't very long to talk about a bee. You need about 10 or 12 hours at least, you know. When I go to rattling, that's all I want to do is talk B. So if you want to talk B, let me know. But uh, the club, the Southeast Oklahoma Beekeeper Association, I think was formed in 1986 or somewhere in that neighborhood. But every region has their own bee club. And uh, we've, we've got probably three or 400 followers here in Pittsburgh County. Well, not only in Pittsburgh County, but we go uh, from all around the state. People's always calling. And uh, I kind of take care of all the beekeepers as far as services rendered. I do ordering for people. I order bees for them. I keep them in Queens uh, equipment. I'm the only local person that does equipment. And uh, I do it not for profit. I do it for the sake of the bee. Bees, you got to love them to be in bees, in business with bees. Uh, yes, you're going to get stung more than once. Uh, if you're allergic to them, I wouldn't advise it. Uh, you need to check with your doctor. Make sure before you get into beekeeping. I know a bunch of bee people that's got involved in bees and figure out, well, I'm allergic to that bee. What do I do? The only thing you can do is get rid of them bees because you've got to work those bees. Uh, this time of year, you need to be in that hive every seven days uh, because this is queen rearing season, springtime. What they do, they got to survive. They go in and swarm. 
swarm is survival. That old queen leaves the hive when they swarm. Your old queen. She may be a super duper queen. If you don't manage her, she's going to swarm on you and you're going to lose her. And then there you are. You got to start all over with a new queen that you don't know nothing about. They'll make. Pardon? What I do if they swarm, is that what you're asking? If they swarm, if I see them, I'll catch them. I'll reintroduce them to a new hive. You start a new hive with that swarm. You still got your old queen in that swarm. So you're still good. Uh, but anyway, the, when they swarm, you lose about 45 to 65% of all your bees in your hive. So, you know, the honey flow here is short. You got probably 30 days, very top, to produce that honey. And a, survive, and a hive has got to have 60 pounds of honey to survive the winter. But good years, you know, uh, you can average from 100 pounds of honey to 400 pounds of honey. It depends on the number of hives you have. Uh, where you live has got a lot to do with it. Uh, drought, during the drought is terrible. There was no flowers. We, I started feeding my bees in July. That's unheard of. You know, you don't do that. You don't feed till November to get them ready for the winter. But you know, dry years, there's no flowers out there, there's nothing for them to eat. You know, bees, they'll come to you and let you know when they're hungry, believe it or not. They'll come knocking on your door. Yes, ma'am. Sugar water. You mix, depends on what time of the year. This time of the year, it's 50-50. Half sugar, half water. And believe you me, they can take a lot of it. They produce maybe a cup full of honey out of that gallon of syrup that you give them. Very little, but it takes a lot to produce. And they will turn sugar water into honey. And I can set them side by side to you on floral honey and sugar water, and you cannot tell me the difference. Yeah, because most people give beekeepers a hard time. That, you got to, to, in order for them to bees to survive, you must feed. Uh, I'm kind of like lax. My outhives, what I call my outhives, is away from my house. I never feed my outhives. You know, they got a pretty good survival rate. I lose one every once in a while, but most of the time they come out better than the ones I feed. Well, I don't know. But... Uh, Right. If it's a good year, if it's a... Yes. Yeah, you, hummingbird feeder is too small for a bee. To, they do work it. You see humming, bees on hummingbird feeders, but there's special feeders. It's, yes. Uh, there's several types. They got in high feeders, top high feeders, outside. I community feed. I feed everybody's bees. I feed everybody's bees when I feed. Right. Uh, if there's a food source for a bee, they will not bother sugar water. They will not touch it. You know, it's the same way with pollen. If there's pollen out there, you put out a substitute pollen, they will not bother it. They won't bother it. Now, if they need it, they'll take it. That's the way you can tell when your bees get hungry is when that sugar water goes to dropping. Within a matter of hours, you ain't got none out there. Do you, do you keep it available even? No. Okay. I, I, like I said, when they get hungry, they'll come looking for you. Okay. They'll let you know. Mine come to the house and knock on the door. You know, just kidding. <laughs> but they do come to the house. Yes. 
and they, they'll follow me in too sometimes and you know they get hung up in your hair or something <laughs> but uh, but honeybees you know I, most relaxing thing you can get is sit out there and watch them hum, honeybees work you'd be amazed at the well 1.6 million flowers one bee visits at in her lifetime she makes one teaspoon of honey. 1.6 million flowers. And like I said, this time of year, it's 21 day lifespan. Maximum is 45 days. Queens live three to six years. It, most time they run out of eggs. Uh, they can't reproduce run out of sperm, I'm sorry, and they quit about three years. Once they run out of sperm, they're dead. The bees detect it, they'll kill her and raise a new queen. If they got an egg, they gotta have an egg to do it. If they ain't got an egg, they can't reproduce. First flower would be uh, white Dutch clover. They love it. It stays active as long as there's moisture. Uh, three or four months. It, it's early. It comes in March. It's, you know, uh, there's also a hedge type tree called Vitek. It's not the true name. It's one of them names I can't say, but we call it Vitek. And it blooms from about the 15th of May to a frost. If it's a tree, it, it's 20 foot tall and 20 foot wide. Uh, I have them there on the place. I, I probably got three or 400, but you know, it's one of the best I've seen. It makes a dark honey and I, it's, it's good flavor. Your honey, Flavor depends on the flower they take. They'll work the best flower. They take it first. And then all your substitutes, they, you know, go down the line. But they, they always work the best first. If you watch them and see what they're working, white Dutch clover is probably one of the best. Uh, early, uh, not early, but uh, the red top, Crimson, it's good, but it only lasts about a week. You know, it don't. You know, it's real good for that week, but after that, it's dead. Do you uh, two harvest from your hive? Do you do a spring? No, no, ma'am. Uh, I don't. I know some people do. Uh, I do one harvest. It's generally about first week in August. Uh, I'm just. I don't do spring honey because your bees are busy raising bees. That's, you know, and I don't, normally I don't do nothing to that hive till August when, when everything's gone. But, uh, do bees eat like mulberry blossoms and like any kind of a blooming? Not, not everything. Uh, they can't, their, their tongue, is not long enough. Okay. Like honeysuckle, it's out. Bumblebees can work it, but, right. but not a honeybee. Uh, mulberry, you know, any kind of fruit that blooms, bees will work most of it. But they got their particulars. They take the best. Like an apple tree, I didn't see a bee on my apple trees. But the peach and the plum, they work real heavy. But they're a little earlier than the apple. Apple is later, and these other things out there they'd rather have is that apple bloom. Anybody got anything else? Uh, I know I, I kind of go out of the way. I, uh, you know, if you got a garden and you need it pollinated, you know, there's make arrangements to have a beehive around if you don't see no bees. 
Uh, normally, if you've got a garden that's blooming, you'll see a bee. But a lot of times there's no bees, no bees at all. Uh, watermelons, you know, everybody, I know they got to be pollinated. But honeybees do not get nothing out of watermelons. There's no nectar, there's no pollen. So, you know, honeybees are starved to death on watermelons. You can have 500 acres out there and that hive's going to die. So if you had a blank canvas, what would you start with first? The growing up the clover and the trees, and then maybe a year later add the beehives? And uh, get, you, get it ready, yes. Prepare, uh, get everything, read everything you can about honeybees. Uh, watch every video you can. Some of those videos are kind of like, you know, they're not worth watching, <laughs> but there's some of them out there. A lot of people like to talk instead of talking honeybee. They're talking about their self, you know. Uh, you know, you just pick and choose. Uh, but if you're going into bee business, you need to prepare. I'd at least wait a year, talk to people, go to bee association. Uh, we're located at 707 West Electric. OSU Extension Office. We meet there monthly at uh, 2 p.m. It's always on the last Saturday of the month. Uh, we, we charge a minimum of $10 a year for membership, 15 for a family, and that goes back to the beekeepers. Uh, they prepare drinks, desserts, snacks, and everything. At B Club. Yes, ma'am. Two PM Saturday, the last Saturday of each month. Except November and December. The deer hunters has got to take a break. <laughs> you know. So we 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 open ten months a year. And uh, like I said, it's ten dollars for singles, fifteen dollars for family. I don't care if it's fifteen of you, it's fifteen dollars. But, uh, I like the ear, sir. But, you know. <laughs> so when, the, when you said the watermelon and they can't do the water, they don't get anything from the watermelon, is it? They don't receive nothing. The honeybee don't. Oh, okay. they, there's no nectar, no pollen in watermelon. Does it make a difference if it's a seedless versus a seedless? No. Okay. Watermelon's watermelon. Bees can't survive on watermelon. Okay. But. They love it. it yes. Much. They get sugar out of that. That's what they're... Yeah, I, I busted a lot of watermelons, feed bees. But they they get sugar out of it. So how often do you test for mites or any pests or diseases? Well, it says you should do it every chance you get on mites. But I guess I'm one of those people that don't believe in it. I don't never test and I don't treat. Because, you know, mite treatment, the, the chemicals you put in that hive, you know, I got to wear a, a face shield, mask, or whatever to put them chemicals in. What about them poor bees in that hive? They ain't got one. You know, it's got to be bad for them. So I, I don't treat. I'm not, I don't, it, it don't matter to me what you do to your hive what I'm saying. I don't treat for that simple fact. If I can't take it, I know that honeybee can't. You know, I, I've seen, they, they talk about all these acids they got nowadays. You know, it kills your queen. It takes her lifespan down. She'll quit laying. You know, so that tells you they're no good for you bees. I don't do it. But, you know, I, I lose bees all the time. And I know, why do you lose them? Well, golly, who knows why I lose them. Uh, a guy come to me today, he bought a, some bees off of me two weeks ago. He said, hey, they absconded. Guess what, buddy? Hey, I had one abscond too. <laughs> it happens. 
Bees are going to be bees. But, you know, you can do anything in the world for them, and they're going to be bees. They're going to leave you. They're going to die. Uh, death rate, majority of it, is your queen. Your queen dies, and they ain't got that one egg in there. They raise another queen. Your hive is gone. You may not even realize it till they're all dead. You know, that's just one of them deals. Uh, seven days this time of year, you know, that's a lot being in a beehive. But why I say seven days, they can have a queen cell in that hive seven days. The egg is late, three days that egg hatches, six days that cell is capped, and 16 days you've got a new queen in that hive. And if you don't go in there and get that cell when it starts, your old queen's going to leave on day 10 or 11 of that cell process. She'll, she'll fly out and take half your bees. It's called swarm. That's survival for the bees to do it. But uh, a worker bee takes 21 days to hatch. They're in the house. They do house duties for about seven days. Uh, they clean. They follow the queen around. she got her little helpers always following her around and grooming her and feeding her. And then your drones, it takes 23 days for those to hatch. And uh, drone bees are you mite bees. If you want to find a mite, tear into a drone cell, you'll probably find a mite. That's about the only time you'll actually see a mite on a bee. Is it? When you, if you, they always have burr comb on top of you, frames in between your high bodies. That's where your drone cone is. If you look in there, you'll probably find some mites. They're little brownish orange, small, and they attach right behind the back of the head between the wings somewhere or underneath. You'll, you probably won't never see one on a worker bee, but drones is where they hatch, drone brood. That's why beekeepers put a special frame in there for drones and they fill it up, the old queen lays in there, all drones, all male bees, and when it's full and capped, take that drone cone out, and give it to your chickens. Your chickens will eat all that drone larvae, and your mite's gone. There's 3,600 cells on each side of that foundation. One frame, you got 3,600 on this side, 3,600 on that side. So, you know, that's, that's, and you got 10 frames in there like it. And it's something when you go in there and pull it out, and it's all brood. Nothing but young bees underneath them cabins. You find six or seven frames like that. This time of year, you can do it. August, nah, little bitty. They'll say reduce down because they're going to run out of food. Any more questions? How long does the queen bee live? Pardon? How long does the queen bee live? Bee lives? A uh, worker, huh? The queen? Uh, it, it's been documented seven years. A good land queen, still land good, seven years. But uh, normally it's about three. Most people do it. I requeen every year for the simple fact I like those young queens. They lay and they brood up your high box quick. How many acres does it take to basically sustain a good hive? Well, you can do it on 100 by 150 lot. That, right, that bee is going to travel two and a half miles. So you can use your neighbor's property. And don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> but they range two and a half miles, a worker bee does. 
they go a little further than that, up to five years when, I mean, five miles after it gets dry and food gets short, they'll travel further. But yeah, you can, you can have bees as long as they don't interfere with your neighbor. Ask your neighbor before you get bees. It's they're killing bees. Well, that's what I to say. Yeah. yeah. And you know you can't convince them people they're not. But every time they kill that flower, they kill a bee. Right. Protect mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. You know, two four D pasture per, uh, spray, it don't affect a bee per se. You can spray it on the bee and he'll fly off. Or she'll fly off. But it kills something she eats. Everything you use nowadays kills bees. That's why there's such a decline, you know, in bee population. Like 2012 to 2014, it was terrible. You couldn't keep a hive of bees. They'd bring it in. All your foundation is contaminated with pesticides. That kills all your babies. And it stays inside that cone. It don't never leave. Yes, ma'am. So you have four unique. There's four queens. You have four what? Hives? Have four hives? Yes. There's only one queen to a hive. Can they be close together? Yes, ma'am. You can put them side by side. No. Oh, you might get a stray bee here once in a while, but you'll know it at the entrance if you watch. But you get more than one queen in the hive, there'll be a royal battle. Yeah. One of them's going to die. Yeah. Or maybe both of them. Twenty-one days this time of year. Forty-five days is max on a worker bee, uh -huh. and a drone bee I think is three months. But yeah, uh, queen bees. There's only one to the hive, and if you get more than one, you're going to have a fight on your hands. And queen bees don't sting. Per se, they don't sting you, but they do sting other queens. They look for other queens in the hive. She'll make a, what they call, piping sound. It's a little noise. You, you can hear it, but it's very faint. Generally, late in the evening, you can hear it. She's looking for another queen. That's what she's doing. She makes that noise. It's called piping. No, ma'am, not, not per se hibernate. What they do is cluster. Uh -huh. they'll, get, they'll form a ball inside the, in between the frames, and they keep warm, generating heat. They generate their own heat. They generate their own air conditioning. And the outside moves inside, inside moves out. They do that all winter long. And they... Honeybees don't freeze to death. Okay. Honeybees starve to death when it gets cold. They don't break cluster to eat. If it's cold for seven days, you may lose your hive because they will not move from that area where they're at until it's warm enough for them to move. They got somebody there they're protecting. It's called a queen. Yeah. They're protecting her. They will not come off of her. They'll starve to death right there in that spot. Is there something you can do, like put a heating pad on it? No. No. So they, in the wintertime, they just stay in their... Cluster. In their cluster. Yes. They don't come out to feed or... No. Their... No. If it's, you know, warm enough, they'll move up and get on the hunting and eat. But if it's super cold, like it, you know, minus 14 or whatever, 
or even minus zero, they will not break cluster to eat. They'll starve to death. I've had them die within an inch of the honey. Wait. I, I just see like people just stack up deep roots right. on the bottom. I don't know if they add like an extra honey super for all the way I do it, I run two high bodies. It's two deeps. You one on the bottom and then the second story, the same height. And then I add honey super. You can have as many honey supers as you want, but there there's no need putting them on there if they're not using them. You know, Generally, one honey super around here in this area, it's all you're going to get. That's 60 pounds of honey. But you got to remember, you got to have 60 pounds in there for them bees to eat also. So, how many hives do you currently maintain? Okay, you said about 60 pounds per one hive. So, whenever we see honey vendors who last all season, they have to have about how many hives? Or are they like sending their bees out of state and then getting honey that way too? Like doing that two rounds of honey? Right. Most of you. The people you see going out of states, what they call commercial beekeepers, mm -hmm. that's what they do. They go from one area that's super loaded, like the almonds in California, right. uh, the blackberries, and you know, whatever. They they take those bees to that. That's how they do two or three honey. Okay. They they pull off the honey before they go into the next field. Okay. They get lots of honey. But here, McAllister, Pittsburgh County, you don't right. do that. You can't. There's no way. You're lucky to get that 60 pound. Okay. You know. So you process your own honey? Yes, ma'am, I do. Uh, <laughs> you can under 500 pounds without an approved kitchen. Okay. Anything over 500 pounds, you have to have a state approved kitchen, health department. I average from, well, 120 to 385, you know. Uh, I, try to, I try to keep 40 hives, but it's a full-time job trying to keep 40 hives. Most generally, I ended up about 20, 20, 20 and 30. It's probably what I average running. You're busy, sir. Tell me about it. I don't know how I got here. I got people waiting in line. <laughs> uh, I go to Arkansas tomorrow, so, you know. But it's something all the time. But I do, I, I order for people. I, I take care of my beekeepers. I've got probably 300 contacts in my phone. And uh, they always call me, you know, with questions. They say, well, I got a dumb question. There's no dumb question, beekeeper. Believe you me, I've heard a bunch of good ones, but <laughs> they're not done. If, if you want to ask me the question, it's not done because you want to know the answer. And sometimes I can answer them, sometimes I can't. But I like a picture. Take, take me a picture of the situation, and I can probably answer that question. You know, because everybody calls uh, parts of the beehive different from what I do. You know, a brood chamber, that's where they raise bees. That's what it is, that's, that's it. You know, honey super, well, that's where your honey store. I can communicate that way. But when they call them, uh, them slats in there, that's not a slat, that's a frame. Right. You know, they, I don't know what they're talking about when they call them slats. But I, I've heard of all. <laughs> Any more questions? I think I'm about running out of time. Um, you're good, sir. Man, I ain't even got warmed up yet. <laughs> so where do you buy the Bitex trees? Where you buy them? Can I get a start off of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You don't have to buy them from me. Uh, I'm pretty handy. Huh? I'm pretty good at starting things. So. Okay. 
They say you can root them, but I don't know. I've tried it, and I couldn't. So, but I, I, I got young ones come up under the trees, and it, if we don't get some rain, you can't pull them up. But. But uh, like I said, you need to space them out probably 50 foot apart because they're 20, 20 foot cross. And they got a light blue purple flower and lots of them. Okay. And the be a light on that flower and get everything he needs out of it and fly and that petal will fall. Next morning, that petal's back there. It blooms that quick. Yes, it's. They, if if it's water, they'll bloom. And I like to see people planting for bees. It helps me out a whole bunch. Plant them flower beds, you guys. Anybody else? I guess I'm done. No more questions.